to all those who devoted their lives to aviation. The Wings of Russia Studio presents The Wings of Russia documentary. Seine Maschine wackelt. Die Jagd war erfolgreich. One of the largest air battles of the Second World War took place in spring 1943 in the sky over Kubain. After the defeat in Stalingrad, the German troops were pushed back to Rostov and were partially consolidated on the Taman Peninsula. Covering access to the Crimea, the enemy established a powerful defense line. A Soviet sea-to-shore assault was launched, which gained a minor beachhead in the enemy's rear called the Male Zimla. The Germans undertook massive air raids to liquidate the threat from the rear in which over 500 aircraft took part. But the Soviet aviation as well concentrated up to 900 machines in that place. A sharp battle lasted over two months. It was there that the breakthrough in the struggle for the air superiority commenced. The main role in the battle for Kuban was played by the Soviet fighters of the new generation. Fighters. The Stormy Years. Moscow, Spring 1939. A big conference on aviation is held in Kremlin. The war in Spain has just ended, where the Soviet fighters fought against a new counterparty, the German BF-109 fighter designed by Willy Messerschmitt. This high-speed monoplane, equipped with a liquid-cooled engine, had an excellent aerodynamics. Military experts were very impressed by this aircraft. In result of the conference, assignments were issued to several design groups to build new fighters. However, out of a dozen of experimental aircraft, only three machines went into mass production. The design bureau of Alexander Yakovlev spent less than a year to design E-26 aircraft. It was equipped with the M105-1100 horsepower engine. This liquid-cooled engine was developed by a group of Vladimir Klimov. It had a relatively small cross-section, providing the fighter with a lesser drag. In January 1940, test pilot Yulian Piankovsky took the aircraft into the air. The start of the factory tests were hopeful. However, three months later, the first flight prototype got into a rack. Yulian Piankovsky died. Flights continued on two other prototypes and soon E-26 was passed over for the state tests. However, before their completion and in spite of numerous defects, it was decided to put the aircraft into mass production. Almost together with the Yakovlev's aircraft, E-301, a fighter designed by Semyon Lavochkin, Vladimir Gorbunov and Mikhail Gutkov, was put on tests. E-301 was equipped with the same engine as the E-26. The so-called Delta wood, the pressed veneer saturated with phenol resins, was used in the aircraft construction. This material was heavier than wood, but had better strength, water resistance, and practically did not burn. In the end of March 1940, the dark cherry polished and sparkling E-301, nicknamed by the airfield jokers a grand piano, made its first flight. The aircraft was taken off by test pilot Alexei Nikashin. In the same days, another new fighter went into flight tests. The E-200 altitude high-speed interceptor was designed by Artyom Mikoyan and Mikhail Gurevich. The fighter was equipped with AM-35A engine designed by Alexander Mikulin. 
This engine was aimed for long-range bombers and had huge power, and although it was rather heavy for a fighter, it managed to provide the designed altitude characteristics. The tests of the new aircraft were conducted by test pilot Arkady Yekatov. The sample fighter reached a speed of 650 km per hour and became one of the fastest aircraft of that time. The practical ceiling of 12,000 meters was impressive as well. In comparison with E-153 and E-16 Polycarpus fighters already in service in the Red Army, the new aircraft had maximum speed of 120-150 km per hour more. This was reached thanks to more powerful engines and better aerodynamics. In August 1939, Germany and the USSR entered into a non-aggression pact. An agreement on economic cooperation was also signed, according to which Germany was supposed to supply samples of military technique to the Soviet Union. That's how in 1940 the brand new German aircraft appeared in the Soviet Union, with the Messerschmitt 109E among them. This aircraft underwent thorough analysis in the Scientific Institute of the Air Force. In result, a report was prepared in which it was outlined that the German fighter was significantly faster than E-16, but was in general 50 km per hour slower than the new Soviet aircraft. The report emphasized technical perfection of the German fighter and that it was full of modern equipment and easy to control. Advantage of the German aircraft was that it was all made of metal. Due to lack of duraluminum, wood was used in the construction of the Soviet fighters, a more heavier material. But what to do? It was the only way to arrange mass production of the new machines. Serial production was performed in conditions of a tough time deficit. Factories could hardly keep up with the set plans and hurriedness influenced the quality of the end product. Serial aircraft characteristics often did not reach the set project data. A parade in commemoration of the October Revolution was held on the Red Square on November 7, 1940. International situation is tense and fraught with any surprises. German military representatives are among the invited guests. E-16 fly over the Red Square. Audience already got used to them. All of a sudden, a group of five sharp-nosed fighters passes at full speed. They were the Yakovlev's E-26. According to the procedures set in those times, all fighters were identified by a letter E. However, in November 1940, a decree was issued ordering all aircraft to be identified by the names of their designers. Thus, E-26 became Yak-1, E-301 became LAG-1, and E-200 became MiG-1. Later modifications of the Lavochkin and Mikoyan aircraft were identified accordingly as LAG-3 and MiG-3. They had larger fuel reserve. Each of the